What is going on guys? Patrick's here. So today I wanted to talk about one of our parts for this week, the cow catcher. So the cow catcher is the piece that goes on the front of the train to, you guess it, push cows out of the way if they find their way onto the train tracks. Hence the title, cow catcher. <laughs> it catches cows. So what we are going to do is we are going to basically set up a loft between the big piece of the cow catcher and the small piece after creating them, and then finally punch holes into different locations and add the pegs to attach to the train, which are appropriately sized to fit on the front of our train in those holes that you placed when you made the train body initially. So let's make a new part studio and hop into it. So we're going to create a new part studio. We are going to rename this part studio down here. This is going to be cow catcher. Okay. Works is hard sometimes, you know? Uh, then we're going to start by creating the front part of the cow catcher. So you can see this right here. We're going to create this section, which we have a measurement here of 1200, or not 1200, I'm sorry, 1.2. <laughs> Again, reading's hard sometimes when you're recording these. So, so this is a distance of 1.2. We have a height here of 0.25. And then finally, we have a center height of 0.75. So that would be the height here. We can also alternatively make the wider side. So you can do it either way for your loft. So for this demonstration, I am going to first create the big one, which you can see here is going to be a distance of 1.8. Once again, the same height at 0.25. And then finally, the center height of 1. This will make it so my origin point is the very edge of the cow catcher, which I personally appreciate a lot just for uh, construction's sake. To the front, click, and we're going to back up a little bit there. Outer dimension. I think my numlock wasn't on. Yep. There you go. So 1.8 first. Next, we are going to go up on each side by 0.25. Say it four. Same on this side as well. And we are going to add a midpoint. So I'm going to click and add a dot to this. We're going to use our constraint for midpoint. And then select the dot, select the line, and it should snap us right into the middle which then will allow us to go up one. Okay, next is just doing our final connections here and here and turning that one line that we had into a construction line so that way it doesn't affect our final drawing. Okay, that is the first part. So we're going to hit the check on this sketch and we need to create a second sketch. Now, the reason how we create lofts in the first place, and we learned this a little while ago when we did some of the tutorials on lofting, is we need a secondary object or sketch on a different plane in order to make the connection between the two. So in order to do that, we need to figure out, one, how far away is this small triangle from the big, and two, how do we create an actual plane to represent that? So how we figured it out first is based on a couple uh, pieces of the drawing here. This is a little bit hard to translate, so I'm going to talk a little bit slower through it, so that way you can get an idea of where I'm coming from. So the first thing that we notice is from the top-down view where we have these openings, we can see two different measurements. The first one is this 0.125. The next is this 0.5. Now something to notice about this 0.125 is that it starts at the very edge and works our way up to this piece here. The next portion that we notice is, again, this 0.5, and it's between the two circles. Now, the goal is to figure out how far away is this individual piece. So in order to figure that out, that is actually located here. So you can see the measurement of the actual thickness of the material is 0.1 for this section. So that would be our last missing piece that we require. So if we add these up in total, we have 0.5 plus 0.125 gives us 0.625 in total plus the 0.1 makes it 0.725. So that is how far I need to offset my plane. So the next thing is how do I do that? So we're going to make a plane by selecting the plane tool. We are going to select not an entity, but the front facing plane that we did. And then we are going to create an offset plane. So we're gonna select the direction. You can pick either direction, whatever you prefer. 
it doesn't actually make a difference in the grand scheme of things. I'm going to send it backwards. And then we put in our measurement of 0.725. Perfect. OK, hit the check. And that is our created plane. The next thing we're going to do is sketch. So we're going to sketch on the plane we just created. And I'm going to do this from the back side just because it's a little bit easier. What we're going to do first is we are going to use the projection to make sure that we can use some of these measurements across our actual figure. There we go. So we just projected the original geometry instead of using a measurement. The next thing is we're going to use the center marker to create our smaller section. So you can see here, we know that these two line up straight up the middle, so that's perfect. But then the next thing is this measurement. So we're going to first create a line that is 0.6 on one side. Because again, 0.6 is half of what? 1.2. We go up the same exact distance, which is one of the reasons why we projected the geometry. So we can actually utilize this line to create our 0.25 without having to write anything new. Same on the other side. We're going to go 0.6. And we, of course, like once again, we are going to line this up. Selecting the line there. Perfect. Then lastly, we're going to go up in the center, 0.75. Connections for both of these. And then finally, change the center line to construction. There we go. Not so bad. Hit the check. So as you can see here, we have two sections of the plane. We have the projected geometry here, our center line, our smaller section here, and our bigger section. So this outside piece is going to be largely ignored. It was just to make some of our drawing processes a little bit easier. So we're going to select the loft option. So the loft option is located on our basic section of the toolbar next to extrude, revolve, and sweep. So we're going to select loft. We select our first figure, which is here. Then we select our second and it should create just a connection in between the two. Once we're done there, there's no other conditions we have to add. We just simply hit the check, and we're good to go. So the cow catcher is really starting to come together very quickly. The last thing we actually have to add is just a series of details, which aren't actually too bad. So this, is gonna, this can be basically done in any order that we require. However, it is important to note what, what you're actually doing at a given time and how it could affect the rest of the drawing. The first things that I'm going to complete are these openings here, as well as shelling out the actual shape. Then lastly, I will go onto the back of this and add the pegs as required. <coughs> so, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is create these top openings. So I'm going to go to the top here, and we are going to sketch on one of the planes here. So we can directly just start drawing on it, easy peasy, no big deal there. What we're going to do next is project the geometry of the actual figure, and we are going to use an offset. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because this is equidistant all the way around. It has a distance of 0.1 for your actual figure. So if we just select the actual figure and then attempt to offset it, what we can do is just drag this inward, click, and then we're changing this to 0.1. So oh, there's our gap, very easy to do. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to hit the check here. We're going to sketch onto this plane and then select our geometry and once again offset. Drag it inward, click off, and make sure that this is 0.1. Get a very straightforward process, but also incredibly easy to mess up if you're not too careful. So, okay. There's our two figure right there. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do an extrusion. Now something to note that's really important and actually meaning that I'm going to show why it's important by doing the next part, which is the shell. Because you'll be able to see better if I hollow it out first, why this next part is so important. So it says, note the material thickness is 0.05. So when we're clicking the shell option, we're going to select 0.05 for our thickness and then just simply select the bottom face. 
By doing that, we end up hollowing out our actual section, and that's perfect. So all we have to do is that, and that is the next part of the opening. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that, and it's not necessary to do this in that particular step, because again, these can happen in any order, I do want to demonstrate why it's important that we select the correct thickness when we're doing our extrusion. So when we're doing the extrusion, we want to do a remove, but if you notice that when I go to remove, we cut out a chunk of the actual drawing that we don't want to. So while the blind doesn't actually matter for the distance completely, it is important to note that you do actually want a pretty shallow cut through that still goes through the material. Point 0.1 is totally acceptable because of the thickness of the material. But again, it's something worth noting because we don't want to cut into anything else on the drawing. Do the same thing on the other side. We're going to do point 0.1, and instead we're going to do remove, so it goes in the opposite direction. Hit a check. Ba bam There you go. So, we're almost done the cow catcher. It's actually not too bad once you get past the geometry. So that's something worth noting for you. I'm going to flip this over to the other side. So this is where the last section of the drawing actually occurs. What we're going to do here is we are going to add these little pegs to the bottom. They're pretty easy to do once you put the drawings in. And then finally we'll finish them off by chamfering them to give us those little beveled edges. That way you don't hurt yourself on them if you actually would print this. So what we're going to do is sketch the circle locations first, which are easily mapped out on this bottom section. And then we're going to add them in. So let's go with the sketch, look at the bottom face, and then we're going to start drawing. So the first section here, we can see that we're actually starting in the middle. So I'm going to add a midpoint, just like we did previously. And then from there, we can just start drawing. So I'm going to go over 0.625 from the center, and then up 0.125. We're also going to draw a, a get another location by going into the middle once again and totaling these up to 0.625 and of course it stays in the middle so we don't have to change anything. Lastly we just have a mirrored one on the other side. You can do this in multiple ways. I'm just going to hand draw it just now just so we're very clear on where everything is located. But if you feel like being fancy and using the mirror tool, I certainly will not stop you from doing so. In order to do the mirror tool you could simply draw the two circles that are required and then afterwards utilize the mirror tool by using this as your center axis and then just replicating the circle onto the other side. But we don't need to do that. We don't have to get all fancy. You can just draw it the way I just did and it should be the same exact thing. We have circles here that are diameter of 0.125. Remember that on shape prefers diameter as its default circle. So you can just put in 0.125 as your diameter. If you had radius, for example, you could simply just double it in order to get the proper diameter, and that would be very easy for you to do. So, just again, something to keep in mind. Move our dimensions so it's very clear what our drawing looks like. And then, I think we're good to go. So there's no other pieces that we have to add to this section. So we can simply just hit the check here, and then start our extrusions. We look at the depth here, it is 0.125 for our actual extrusion. So I'm going to select all three of these and we are going to go 0.125 for our depth because otherwise it's going to look super goofy with it standing out really long like you just saw there for a second. So we hit the check. Of course we're keeping it add so that way it all becomes one piece. Be careful if you see that any of these parts end up changing colors when you do the extension it is because you decided to use new instead of add. Now sometimes Onshape's smart about it, sometimes it isn't as much. So that's just something for you to keep in mind. Right here we're going to click chamfer. And the last one it says that these are 0.1 or 0.01 chamfers, very, very small chamfers for very small parts. So we're just going to now select our different features and add our chamfers to it. Okay, there you go. So that is the complete cow catcher. So while the angle might not be the best for you guys, it all depends on where you start this drawing. But it doesn't matter in this grand scheme of things when we actually put it to the test in our assembly when we're putting together the entire train. So don't worry about the angle orientation too much. It is perfectly fine. If you guys don't have any further questions, then you guys are better than I am because I have many questions on this. 
But you can always hit me up if you do have any questions. You can comment on the video below or alternatively, if you're part of my class, you can reach out to me on many of our social media platforms and I'll do my best to help you out the best I can. Hopefully you found this video to be sufficient in terms of helping you guys out and I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.